You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, no more dentures. Get a fixed set of teeth, a permanent set of teeth in just a few appointments. With us, we have an expert on the topic, periodontist Dr. Mark Silberg. Dr. Silberg, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, Randy. It's great to be here. A lot of questions about dental implants. Uh, first, tell me about your practice. Who's the typical patient and uh, what are the procedures that you do? Well, I'm a periodontist. I'm a board certified specialist and we treat a variety of gum problems and implant problems. People come to us for a variety of reasons. Many people come to us because they have gum disease. Some people come to us because they look in the mirror and all of a sudden they notice their teeth are getting longer. I'm sure you've heard the all expression right. yeah, yeah. getting long in the tooth. Well, for some people, the gums disappear. They disintegrate and they look in the mirror and they start to see the roots exposed. So sometimes people come to us because they're trying to improve their smiles and they know that we can do some gum grafting or rebuild the gums. And if the foundation is good, we can get those roots covered back up again. All right, and a big part of your practice, dental implants. And a big part of the practice is dental implants. As you know, I've been doing dental implants for 27 years. It's been quite a long journey. I actually started placing dental implants back in the mid 80s when hardly anybody had heard about them. And uh, since the mid 80s, the science has expanded and now they're being done all over the world. Back then, however, it was new and unusual. Now when we say at the top of the show, no more dentures, is that the future of dentistry? I mean, everything will be attached to an implant or something like that? Do you believe that? Oh, well, I believe that that's one of the goals of dentistry is to be able to give people real teeth for life. If they've been missing a tooth because it was, it was lost in an accident or if they were playing baseball and it was knocked out, then we're looking for permanent dental tooth replacement implant solutions. And I think that this is the future. So help me understand then, you know, what's changed? I mean, why is it what used to take you guys six or nine months can now happen and, you know, you can get dental implants and teeth and sometimes the same day. What's changed? Well, everything's changed. The original dental implants were bulky. They were designed in garages and there was no science behind them. Today, implants are designed microscopically. So the minute that they're placed in the body, the bone is attracted to it. The bone wants to wrap itself around the implant. The bone wants to heal to the implant. Today, we can put an implant in, and with some patients, we're using that implant in six or eight weeks. When okay. I started 27 years ago, we had to bury the implant and wait six months, uncover the implant, and then use it. So now you can do it right then and there. Yep. And, in, and imaging, you say, has changed everything. Imaging has changed a lot. If you've ever gone into a dentist and you've seen them hold up the little x-rays to the light or hold the panoramic x-rays up, those are two-dimensional images. Okay. In our office, we have a CAT scan. That allows us to see and plan on our patients in three dimensions. That increases the safety, it increases the efficiency, and it lets us plan in ways we could never it's not plan painful. before. I mean, I mean, pain is not something these patients complain about for the most part? When we remove a tooth, it's more painful than putting an implant in. I okay. put an implant in my father when he was 79 years old, and yeah. we didn't, and we used the advanced planning. We didn't have to open the gum. And Randy, most of the pain comes from the fact that we have to open the gum. Bone is very little in the way of nerve. Okay. I put the implant in my father and said, look, you're gonna need two Tylenol, and he thought I was lying to him. At, at the end of the night, he said, look, I can't believe it. You were right. All right, now, now you have fun in your office, by the way. Oh. Okay, because nobody likes going to the dentist, especially the specialists, right? Do you, do you hear that where they say, no offense, doctor, but... Uh... People come in and it's amazing the anxiety level that people have. But do you hear that? Do they specifically oh, say? All the time. They don't like? All the time. I don't like pain. I don't like the dentist. I wish I didn't have to be here. What do you say to that when they say that? Yeah, I understand. If I was you, I wouldn't want to be here either. Okay. <laughs> but one of the things that we work really hard to do, I do it, my staff does it. We, we make people feel like they're in their own homes. We, we, want, okay. to, we want to use humor. We want to lighten it up. They say you're funny, by the way. Well, I am. My, no, my kids don't think I'm funny. <laughs> your kids don't think you're funny. But your patients do, and that's but, all that matters, But the patients right? do. I mean, the number one thing for us is to make sure that people are in a place where they know they're cared about, okay. where they get great care, and, and we do that in part with humor. Now, okay. sometimes we use drugs and medication, but the humor never hurts. Never hurts. Okay, dental implants, and I have a lot of questions. You know, we talk about no more dentures for people just tuning in. But your background and training, I mean, you had a study club right now. I have a study club. We have 30 some dentists in our study club. We all have to study. We all have to learn. Science is moving and evolving so quickly it's very hard to keep up with stuff. So we use the study club as a vehicle to make sure that we you guys a talk a lot about dental implants? Quite a bit. No, we talk about cosmetic dentistry and we talk about other things as well. 
But implants is a very strong focus of the study club. You know, one of the things I liked about you on the, on, on the telephone, you say your entire career has been on the leading edge and you surround yourself with people like that. Elaborate on that. I've known from the day I went into practice that I, that I did not want to be the guy that as I approached the end of my career, the new younger doc came in and looked at what I did and said, gosh, was the last thing he learned the day he left dental school. So I've always believed passionately and with all my heart that I had to keep up. That I ha I Is there that much to learn though about dental implants? Where you always have to? It's not just about Because the, you say 150 hours of continuing education. It, it's not just the implants. Okay. It's, it's everything you have to know in dentistry. There's all the science, all the medical issues that come up today, all the pharmacology. I mean, really, we have to be so careful to keep people safe in our practices. All right. It takes an, an inordinate amount of time. You have to spend days out of the practice every year going to class and keeping up. All but, right. but I love it. See, I don't see it as a chore. Now, the denture wearers, for the, I mean, they don't like their denture. I mean, I know a few denture wearers. I never hear any complaints. Really? Okay. I, I can tell you this. There's okay. no such thing as a happy denture wearer. Okay. Think about this. If you lose an arm, if you lose a leg, you, you are what's called disabled. If you lose two legs, you get a wheelchair. Now, you can still get around, but not as well. If you lose all your teeth, the wheelchair you get is called a denture. You can still get around. You can still eat, speak, smile, and function, but not nearly as Isn't well. Is it true, by the way, they're not really tearing your food? They're just kind of mushing it around? Oh, it is true. Wear? And one thing about denture wearers, and this is like important to know. Like a cow. Like a cow. They move sideways. When you have all your teeth, you have about this much bone. When you lose your teeth, and you get your first set of dentures, you have about this much bone. After five to 10 years, the bone continues to shrink and you have very little bone left. And so what do dentures wearers do? They use adhesives. They use the poly grip or the fix a dent okay. to try to hold their dentures in place. The lower denture doesn't even stay in place with glue. In fact, it's been reported that a lower denture can move up to a half an inch in function. And so what happens? The denture wearer goes to eat a meal and they're chasing their food around. Okay. Uh, I like it. Do they it. confide in you with this uh, on a consult? Do they tell you these kind of things? Some do. Some do. Some are embarrassed, frankly. And some feel guilty. All right. And, and, and but you say with as little as two implants, you can give something snap in, snap out. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I can show you. Let's take a look. I mean, th this is a model. This is a typical denture. Don't exaggerate over there, right? What's it Here, <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, it is. <laughs> and is this about, I mean, this is accurate. And for people who can't see it, I, I guess there's attachments underneath, like a denture. The, the, the implant itself has a snap on top, right. and the denture inside has a snap, and it, it's much like a snap on a cowboy shirt, that they, they fit together and they hold so in. So no more adhesive with that, just two No implants. more adhesive. Now, two is a bare minimum number. You can get by with two, and you'll function a heck of a lot better than you ever could without them. If you, if you get four in, you'll have an extremely stable denture. You'll feel like you died and went to dental heaven. You, <laughs> you'll be able to eat. You can is eat anything right? you want. Do they ever say that to you? I mean, do they ever come in and tell you what they're eating? Because yes. Because they're they, proud about what they do. They do. The, the, the thing we hear a lot is what people miss in life. And think about this. Every birth, every death, every anniversary, every social event revolves around food. Okay. It's everywhere we go. The denture wearers complain. They can't eat salad anymore. As you pointed out, the, the teeth move like this. Right. They don't move like this. They can't eat salad. They can't crush nuts. They can't eat peanut butter. They're afraid that if they go out to eat and the dentures aren't glued in, that they're going to wind up on the table. And there are problems with those glues. The, the denture wearer gets up in the morning, goes into the bathroom, they're not looking in the mirror right away. They don't want to see themselves. Well, tell me this. Okay, in Pennsylvania, there's got to be tens of thousands, maybe 100,000 people with an upper or lower denture. If it's as good as you say it is, why aren't all the denture wearers doing this? Randy, the, the person that's got a denture no longer goes to the dentist. They go in for an adjustment or two because there's a sore spot, and they never go back. They're not getting examined for oral cancer. They're not being examined to see if the denture doesn't fit anymore. They've disappeared. Most of them don't even know this exists. That's the biggest shame of it so all. So they don't know their options. They don't know that this solution is out there that can change their lives. Another reason I think they don't come in is the fear factor. I mean, listen, most of these people lost their teeth for a reason. Many people went through years of having to deal with teeth that were breaking, teeth that were decaying, root okay. canals, and pain. And they're afraid. The last thing they want to do is go back to the dentist. That's the person that took their teeth out and got them into that position to begin with. And frankly, a lot of people are afraid. Are they afraid of pain, you think? Is that the well, main? 
there's a number of fears, but most people are afraid of pain. People that do know about implants are afraid maybe it's too expensive. Everything costs money. It's, it's just two implants, though. I mean, well, do you think they count their teeth and think, oh, my goodness? Well, one of the things with the evolution of dentistry is that we do not need one implant to replace every tooth. So with two or four implants, we can give them a very good solution that will let them So eat. with, like, let's say two or four implants, they can eat whatever, they an can, apple, they, steak. They can eat whatever. Now, we can use implants in a variety of ways. What I showed you were implants that snap on and off. We okay. also can put four to six or eight implants in, and we can build teeth that bolt in. They don't come out. It's like a fixed set of teeth, a full it, arch. It's like having your teenage teeth back again. They, they go in, and they stay in, and they don't come out. Only the dentist can well, remove them. Well, that's what everybody them. wants, though, right? Something well, that that's what most out. people want. They want, to have, they, want their, they want to turn back the hands of time. Now, what if they don't have a dentist? Because you work together with the general dentist in your town. Is that right? And you team up to do this? Yes. Now, we work with dentists from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. And we're happy to work with any patient's dentist if they have one. If they don't have one, well, then we're happy to help them team up with somebody that can help them. And you're a specialist. Does it cost more to go to a specialist? No, implants are really in about the same range Everybody wherever you go. Everybody gets the same go. price. Well, pretty close. Do you have a bias, do you think? Uh maybe secretly or not so secretly, that they should go to a periodontist well, with training in dental implants? I, I have a very strong bias, actually. Okay. Because if, if you look out in the world, you have people like myself that have spent a lifetime training. What most people don't know, and, and this might be frightening to you, but a dentist can go take a weekend course. Okay. They can go buy a surgical kit, and on Monday morning, they can start placing implants on patients without having formal surgical training, okay. just with a weekend course. So yeah, I think it so makes a big difference where you So should you ask your dentist? You, you should say, you know, how long have you been doing dental implants? There are a number of questions you should You've ask. You've been doing it about 25 years. 27. Is but 27 who's, But years. who's counting? Okay. Are you that much better, by the way, now than you were back then? Absolutely. I mean. Having done thousands and thousands of implants, there's definitely a learning curve. You're better after your first 500 than before. You're better after your first 1,000 than before. You're better after your second 1,000 before. Every implant that you put in gives you more experience. You learn and grow. And every day you come into new situations that maybe you haven't encountered before. Now all the imaging we do and the CAT scanning, that makes a huge difference. And today the software we have lets us practice the surgery on the computer before we ever get to the mouth. So I could take, a right. ca I could take your CAT scan and I could put an implant in on your bone on the computer. And what's even more fascinating, I can take that information and send it to a company that'll send me back a little guide to put in the mouth. So I can get that implant in the exact same position in your mouth that we put it in on the computer. So this teeth in a day is possible. Teeth in a day is possible. You can place an implant, put a tooth on top. How soon can you eat in an ideal situation? Well, like a dentureware. You, you give them maybe four or six implants. In, in cases where someone's coming in with no lower teeth, okay. and we're putting four implants on, we can actually uh, adjust the denture to fit right over the implant so they can go home and use the denture that night. Now, we're not putting a lot of pressure on these implants, and we have to be careful because everybody's situation is different. But in some cases, teeth can be put into function very quickly. Now with you, I mean, you're so confident they're gonna like dental implants. You offer some sort of a, like a, a, a guarantee of some sort. What, elaborate on that. Years ago, I was sitting with a friend of mine and we were talking about the very same question you asked me, which is why don't more people- Denture wanna, wearers. Why don't more denture wearers wanna do this? And he said to me, boy, Mark, it's really a shame people can't take these for a test drive because if they could, they'd like them so much They'd never give them back. So if it was on a Friday and you said, hey, come in for a test drive, on Monday nobody could go back to their loose fitting denture. You believe that? Yes. And what we figured out was we actually could let people take them for a test drive. So we created a program called Take Dental Implants for a Test Drive. And what that means. Is that right? Yep. If somebody comes in and, and they're missing their lower teeth, for example, and we put in two or four implants, we'll let them take them and use them for 45 days. That's, that's more than a drive around the block. Take them and use them. If you're not happy, if you're disappointed, if you don't think they do everything that you thought they would do, we'll take them back out. Really? We'll no, and you'll give them their money back? And we'll give them their money back. What about postage and handling? I'm postage joking. and handling? No, they have to drive <laughs> to the right? office. So, so, so what is that? I mean, it's a trademark it's name. Great. Nobody else can use it. That's really good, by the way. But I mean, it's I, unheard of, right? It, I mean, it's unheard of. That. Nobody else. That's bold. Nobody else has done it. But I've never had a patient that says, gee, doc, I'm sorry I did this. 
and, and it got me to thinking. Okay. If, if everybody's that satisfied with it, why not make this offer? Is this one of those things that the patients, when it's all done, they go, I should have done this years ago? Ab absolutely. And, and I have patients that we, we did this 10 and 15 years ago, and I ask them that question every time. Are you still glad you did this? And they say, yes, I wouldn't be eating today had I not done this. What about age ranges? What are the age ranges? I mean, really? how old can you be to do this? Listen, w one of the roadblocks for some people, they come in and they say, look, if I was younger, I would do this. And I ask them, are you still buying green bananas? <laughs> and if they say yes, I said, listen, if you're waiting for them to ripen, you're not too old. I used to work in a senior care facility. All right. And there was a woman there named Rose, 92 years old, in very good health. Now, some of the residents didn't care. They would just take their teeth out at the table, and dunk yeah. them in the water, and put them back in. But she was a lady. Okay. And she was not going to do that. And so she approached us in the dental department and asked us, isn't there anything you could do? And we said, absolutely. We put in two dental implants that changed her life. It's exactly- 92 what, years old. 92 years old. Why would a 92 year old want to do this? People want to eat and chew and smile and be comfortable when they're 92, just as much as they did when they were 82, 72, 62, or 52. This is important. These are quality of life issues. Nobody wants to get up and dread being able to eat a meal because it hurts every time they chew. Rose was one of those people. She was in great health. She wasn't taking a lot of medications. And she was a great candidate. And in so fact- So 92 year olds. So even if you have a touch of osteoporosis, because 65, 70 is young today. Yep. You can still do it. Absolutely. The World Health Organization did a study on over 7,000 women with osteoporosis, and they found out that the, the success rates were extremely high, still in the 90-some percent range. And the conclusion from these studies is that osteoporosis is not a deterrent for the placement of implants. Both my parents have osteoporosis. Both of them have been on osteoporosis drugs, and both of them have dental implants. So that holds them back, because my mother, 70, I think I told you this maybe, when she was 74, she was told, she's uh, 77 now, but was told, Randy, uh, my medical doctor said they'll fall out. And uh, I mean, does that come up where they say they've been told they don't have enough bone, they'll fall out, things like that? All those things come up, but that's why the science and the imaging is so important. We need to find out in advance who's got the bone, who's, got a, good who's a good candidate. And in fact, the, the one thing that I haven't talked to you about, which is fascinating with the science, in, in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have the imaging, so what, what we had to do was open the gum and look and say, hey, can we, get an right? can we get an implant in? And sometimes we had to close it back up, stitch it, and say, I'm sorry, we can't do it. The imaging today makes things safer and more predictable. So it's and, less trauma to the, to the gums, well, so less pain. You don't have to close it up and walk away and not put the implant in. And we know in advance if the bone is there or isn't there. If it isn't there today, we grow the bone. Today, I'm using frozen stem cells, and I'm using bone growth enhancers that are made in the laboratory. These are the same bone growth factors that both of our bodies okay. make to make new bone all the time. So if we don't have the bone, in most cases we can build it and we can get it. So what it means is most people are really good candidates. Now, we can't put implants in 100% of the people that come in to see us, but most people, if they want the implants, are good candidates. So the denture wear is watching this. Okay, two implants, snap in, snap out. What's the next level up? Four or six? Four or six. And and, then, and if, you, if you can get four or five implants in, maybe six, you can build the teeth. And that's that, a full arch of teeth. I mean, even with two, th they that's get a full. All, it's all the lower teeth. So you might have 14 lower teeth there naturally, but when there's no teeth there, you don't need 14 implants. You can, you can build a set of teeth that get placed, bolted in, they don't come out, and you can do it on as little as four. Often you need six for safety, but we're doing it on four and six implants today. And they could today. eat broccoli, they could eat you know, high fiber foods. Absolutely. Okay. And if they have teeth that are staying in place, they can take one of the things that I love to eat, which is an apple, and they can bite into it, and their dentures aren't gonna flip all over the place. I mean, just think about the sensations of the crunch and the bite into an apple that these people haven't been able to do in years. They may be able to cut one up, or they may, may be able to eat it in the form of applesauce, but that's not the same as taking a bite out of a crisp apple. There's something about that. So even if somebody's been in dentures for 30 years, 35 years, they still can be candidates. They still can be candidates. For dental implants. But the upper, what about the upper? And then the upper's fine because of the suction for the denture wear? Well, first of all, the denture, the, the denture wear goes through something that you and I have never gone through. 
they've had their teeth removed from their heads. They have a foreign object, this big plastic thing shoved up in the roof of their mouth. The first week is miserable. They're in pain, they can't eat, uh, they can't swallow well, they can't speak well. And so they have to learn to so adapt. they adapt, okay. They adapt. For the upper, for the upper, what's the advantage of doing the upper if it's already pretty? Well, uh, think about these two things. Think about speech and think about taste. With speech, the S sound and the T sound is made with the tongue. If you ever listen to a denture or speak, you'll All hear right, you'll hear right? the sound of the <laughs> S's and T's because they don't speak so well anymore. Okay. With dental implants, we can remove all that plastic from the roof of their mouth. And part of the taste and enjoyment of food comes from little minor salivary glands and little nerve endings in the roof of the mouth. So if you can remove that uh, plastic from the roof of their mouth. Like good wine and things like that, right? Absolutely. So then, then they can taste, enjoy the sensations of food, like I was describing a minute ago, in ways that they can't when the roof of the mouth is covered. So. Uh there's no such thing, in your opinion, as a happy denture wearer. No such thing as a happy denture wearer. They just don't. They're know. only people that have learned to adapt. And the day in the life of a typical denture wearer, I mean, I mean, this, well, you say it really interferes with their life. Well, I think it's miserable. First of all, they go to bed at night and they throw their teeth in a glass of cleaning solution. Plastic is a very porous substance, so all those bad things get sucked into the denture every day. So they throw it in this cleaning solution at night. When they wake up in the morning, they go into the bathroom, they're not looking in the mirror. Why? Their faces are sunken and collapsed. The minute you take your teeth out, it looks like you aged 10 years. You get wrinkles and lines in their face. Okay. So the last thing they want to do I mean, is, they tell you this? Is it, this is... No, they don't want to see themselves look like that. In their minds, they're young. They don't want to look in the mirror and see that old face looking back. So what's the first thing they do? They rinse off the denture, they dry it off, and since they don't fit anymore, they grab the tube of glue, they put it on, and they put the plates in. Hopefully they didn't get too much glue on because it goes down the back of their throats. Eventually they learn wow. how to do that pretty well. They finish getting ready, they go downstairs and they have a cup of coffee and they heat up that denture. And what happens to the glue? It starts running down the back of their throat. Really? And I don't know if you've ever tasted this stuff. No. And even if it's minty, I don't know about you, I don't like mint in my coffee. Okay. So, so they're dealing with quality of life I mean, issues that point, you and I don't I mean, deal with. We are with. low on time, but really, no more dentures. I mean, with as little as two implants, you could lose the adhesive and, and have something that... Now, what's the tipping point? Um, I mean, these dentures. I mean, what causes them finally to say, I've had enough, I, you know, I'm going to consider dental implants? Well, m m as I said, most of them aren't going into the dental office anymore. If they're talking to one of their friends that says, oh my God, or they go out to dinner with one of their friends and they see what their friend is eating and they can't eat that. Okay. And they find out that there's a solution out there. So people are dating, obviously dating, you know, dating at 70 on match.com at 70. Wearing a denture is probably very uncomfortable. Uh, I in, have a, in, I in, have in a. In that kind of a situation, a new person or whatever. Social situations are uncomfortable even for married couples. I had a, I had a gentleman in this week, 50 years old. He lost his upper teeth seven years ago. His wife doesn't even know they're missing. Wow. His kids say, say to him, dad, why don't you smile more? He feels guilty, he's embarrassed, he doesn't want to have his wife know this about him. He doesn't want his kids to know it about him. Did he him. become a patient? I mean, did well, he do this? Well, he's becoming a patient now. He's finally now, gonna do Unfortunately, it. he ran into some difficulties in life that uh, prevented him from coming in right away, but now he's ready. He's gonna do it. I have another patient that came in whose husband, they've been married 20 some years. Her husband has never seen her without her teeth, and her biggest fear was if she had to go to the hospital, she'd have to give her teeth up. So. She wanted bolt-in teeth. We were able to put five teeth in on her lower. So permanent, like a fixed set of teeth in the mouth. Fixed set of okay. teeth. She was missing her teeth from the time she was 17. She's gone uh, 25 to 30 years with teeth that come in and out. We installed the implant and we converted her denture and bolted it onto the implants the very same day. She cried when she left the office. Really? Because it was the first time in 30 some years she was able to walk out and have teeth that didn't go like this. Is that right? So we hear these stories, we see these stories all the time. They're life changing. Okay, so don't let your fear of the dentist, the denturers, keep you from doing this. And the risk, you, you've actually eliminated uh, some of the risk by saying, hey, take a test drive. If within 45 days you're not happy, we'll give you your money back. Is that right? That's right. Just return, you know, take out the implants and, and, and they go back to their old ways. You said nobody will do that though. 
I don't think right? so. It hasn't happened yet. I, I'm sure if I live long enough, it will. But so, so they could, they don't need a referral to see a specialist. No, they, they so can they call, can call so you they first, can call us meet directly. with you first, and you'll work with the uh, general. Final message: Somebody watching this. Final message: They're they're still afraid. Listen, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting what you've been getting. If you want something different, you have to do something different. Call, make an appointment, get an evaluation, see what's going on. It won't hurt. You're just coming in to talk and see if you're a candidate. From there, you can find out all the options. So if you want to improve the quality of your life, come and see us. All right, good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff, great info. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com and just put in Dr. Silberg. For now, I wish you good health.